Do you want to speed up your coloured pencil drawings or create smoother backgrounds? Pan pastels could be the answer. I'm Kirsty Rebecca and I make drawing and painting tutorials that are easy to follow so that you can create realistic and professional artwork even if you're just starting out. Whether you're a beginner or more advanced, these tips are going to be helpful for you. If you watched my previous tutorial about using pan pastels with coloured pencil, I wasn't really much of a fan of combining the two mediums, but since then I've actually discovered a different paper which works so much better for this combination. I actually really enjoyed working on the Lux Archival paper, and that's by Brush and Pencil, because the coloured pencil goes over the top of the pan pastel really easily, so I would highly recommend using this paper. I recently did a live Zoom call with a chapter of the Coloured Pencil Society of America because there are a lot of coloured pencil artists who are interested in trying pan pastel because it can speed up the process quite a lot if you use it in your backgrounds or as a base layer to your main subject. So this is actually the second time I'm drawing this exact bird. And that's just because I thought I would make a tutorial that talks about some of the main questions that I got from the Coloured Pencil Society, just because I thought that they would be helpful for you guys as well. I also have a full length real time version of this tutorial where I talk you through every step of the process on my Patreon channel. So I'll leave a link to that in the description below if you want to check it out. So the first question is, what are pan pastels and how do you apply them? So pan pastels are basically just a soft pastel that has been created with minimal fillers and also light fast pigments, which you can blend and mix like paint. They come in a round pan and you apply them with soft tools, that's S-O-F-F-T, which comes in a range of different sponges and knives in various sizes. If you do want to know more about pan pastels, I actually have a couple of tutorials that I will link below for you, which go way more in depth about those specifically. The second question is, how do you use pan pastel for a background of a coloured pencil drawing? So I usually add a few layers of pastel to my background until I get the smoothness that I'm after. You can create a bokeh effect, an out of focus look, or a completely smooth background with the pan pastels if you want to. When you first lay your pastel down, it will look quite patchy, which is totally normal. You just have to keep layering until you get the effect that you're after. I tend to overlap my pastel onto the edge of the main subject a little bit, so that way the pastel doesn't stop right where the coloured pencil starts. And then I will do my main subject and come over the top of that edge with the coloured pencil. So that avoids that halo effect or looking like the subject has been cut and pasted onto the background. The third question is, how can you use pan pastels as a base layer for coloured pencil on top? When using pan pastels as a base layer, you'll want to use minimal pastel so that you still have enough tooth of your paper to be able to add the colour pencil on top. The amount of pastel you need depends on the paper that you're working on as well. I've used the Claire Fontaine pastel mat with pan pastel and coloured pencil. But I found that I can only add a very minimal amount of layers when I use this paper with that combination. But I do like that paper for coloured pencil by itself or pastel by itself. So this paper that I'm working on today is the Lux Archival Sanded Paper by Brush and Pencil. And I find that I can get a lot more layers of coloured pencil on top of the pan pastel layer on this paper specifically. But honestly, you just need to practice and try different papers depending on the techniques and the amount of layers that you prefer to do. Another option is to use a workable fixative between your layers of pan pastel and coloured pencil. And this may help in sealing some of the pastel to add more coloured pencil on top. And I have tried this before with a fixative called Spectrafix. And I rarely actually use fixative for this, but if I do, I make sure that I'm only using it during the beginning of the layering process. So that way I can cover up any sort of splatters from the fixative or any altered colors or darkening or anything like that, which a lot of fixatives tend to do. But when I work on this paper, I don't actually use a fixative at all between the layers because I find that I don't really need it to be able to add that colored pencil on top. The next question is, do you need a large set of pan pastels and how do you blend them? 
In short, you don't actually need a large set of pastel because you can actually blend together your colors just like paint to create any color you need from as little as five colors. This is the pure or painting set, which includes a red, yellow, blue, and then black and white. And it's a really great starter set if you're on a tight budget because you can mix your colors on a separate piece of printer paper and then apply them to your artwork from there. If you have a little more to spend, I'd recommend getting a set of 20 pans that include those five basic colors, but also a range of common colors that you will need for the subjects you prefer doing. I've actually been working with Pan Pastel recently to create my own set of 20 pans, which I use for all sorts of subjects like portraits, wildlife, birds, florals, landscapes, and still life. So in this set, I have those five basic colors that you need to mix any color that you like, but I also have an extra 15 colors, which are my most commonly used colors for all sorts of different subjects. So if I don't have one of the colors that I need in that set, I can very easily mix or alter the color to create the color that I need without needing to have any other different pan pastels. So I will leave a couple of links in the description to the set of five pastels and also my own set of 20 pastels if you want to check them out. The next question is, can you achieve finer details using pan pastels? So you can do finer details to a certain extent using the sides of some of the smaller tools or the sharper edges of the sponges. If you work larger, your details will look proportionately smaller, if that makes sense. Some people find that using paintbrushes or makeup brushes can help get finer details, but I personally don't like the results I get when I'm using them. I just don't think that they pick up and lay down the pan pastel as well as the soft tools do. Generally, I only use pan pastels by themselves if I want to create a little more of an expressive piece because it is a little bit harder to get those tiny little details. But I usually would just add colored pencil or pastel pencil on top anyway to get those finer details. So it's not really that much of a problem. The next question is, do you need to use a final fixative to seal the piece? And how do you frame the finished piece? So a lot of pastel artists won't use a fixative because they tend to cause more problems than they solve. A lot of fixatives tend to darken or alter colors. They can leave splatters and they generally don't actually stop the pastel from smudging or falling off anyway. And it's not actually necessary to use a fixative when you use the supplies and the techniques that I'm using, especially when you're framing it behind glass. With the pan pastel and pastel pencil or colored pencil, there is very minimal dust fall off because the pan pastels lay down in very thin layers in comparison to traditional pastel sticks, which allows the pastel to be pushed into the tooth of the paper. Also, the surfaces like pastel mat, lux archival and other kind of sanded papers really do grab onto the pastel well. When it comes to framing, I've framed all of my pastel pieces the same way as my colored pencil pieces which is in a frame with a matting or mount around the edge of the artwork so the artwork doesn't touch the glass. And if you want to go the extra step, you can also use UV protective and anti-reflective glass and add a spacer in between your artwork and the mount board. So that way there is a small gap that any dust from the artwork can fall into instead of falling to the bottom of the mount board. But honestly, I've never had any problems with dust falling off when I use these supplies and framing without a spacer. But I thought I would mention that because there are some artists that like to use it just in case. If you still have some questions about pan pastels, I have a beginner's tutorial which explains everything you need to know in the top left corner of the screen. So click on that and I'll see you over there.